our lives have come full circle. I actually met Blaine on boats. I was hitchhiking around the world on smaller boats, any boat that kind of needed crew. I'd started in Australia and hitchhiked through to St. Helena, South Africa, over to Brazil. And it was about in Brazil, um, I started running out of money. And I took my last boat up to Tobago. And in Tobago, I phoned a friend of mine and said, hey, I kind of need a job. Well, this friend I had met earlier, and he worked on mega yachts. He was a captain of a 187 foot schooner. Well, he said, sure, come on up to Antigua. I'll give you a job. And that started my life working on mega yachts. I was hired as a first mate on Galileo, which is a 123 foot yacht. And guess what? Blaine was the engineer. So really, it was kind of, you know, meant to be. Actually, the captain even put us in the bow or in the forepeak together. And we had to share a bedroom. So really, what else is there to do on those long passages? Well, that's when Blaine and I got together. And that was, wow, 22 years ago. We sailed around for four years on mega yachts together and we worked as crew. Do you remember that, or have you ever watched that show called Below the Decks? Well, that's exactly what we did. Again, I was the first mate, Blaine was the engineer, and on Galileo, we sailed all the way down through Panama. We went to Galapagos and saw the turtles and just really enjoyed ourselves and enjoyed life and made lots of memories. There was work to do, of course, on the boats, and as a first mate, I was in charge of everything that was on the deck. So I, was, I had to do the winches, I did all the varnish, I did all the stainless and everything like that. Blaine, he was the engineer, so he was in charge of anything engine, from cleaning out black water, to sorting out windlasses, to keeping the engines running and the generators, and everything that needed to be done. We spent about three months in Chile, and down in Chile, we actually went around the horn. It took us twice to get around the horn. We actually got our butts kicked the first time around and had to turn around. On well, the second time around though, we made it. And it was truly amazing. Did you actually know there's a family that lived up there? We met their kids and they gave us a tour around Cape Horn. And then, of course, what did you have to do in Chile? We had to go swimming with the icebergs, which is exactly what we did. Again, we worked hard on the boats. We had guests on board all the time, and when the guests were on board, we were in charge of making sure that they had everything they wanted, and they enjoyed their trip, and they got to do all the water sports and everything. But when the guests weren't on board, that's when we played. We actually even went on a horseback riding trip up into the Andes. And guess what? I really don't like riding horses, and I don't know why I always went on horseback riding trips. We did get ourselves into some bad weather though, but you know what? I never felt unsafe on a boat. I always knew that everything would be okay, and Blaine and I kind of worked as a team and made sure that everything went well. After Chile, we headed west, straight to Pitcairn Island, and what a cool island. You know, that's where Fletcher Christian was in Mutiny on the Bounty. The fruit and the people and the food and everything on Pitcairn Island was amazing. And you know what? All their last names are actually Christian. From Pitcairn Island, we sailed west and headed towards Easter Island. And along the way, of course, we would get some really cool shots and we'd have some fun because, man, it was hot. So we'd put on the climbing harness and dip ourselves off of the boom. Easter Island is one of the probably the most interesting islands I've ever been to. Besides the Moai, just 
seeing the history of the two tribes, the long-eared and the short-eared, and how they fought and how nobody survived from it. Easter Island was also the place where Blaine and I got our tattoos. We've got matching tattoos and the Tangaroa logo is off of those tattoos. Also in the pictures is the crew of the boat. We kind of all became family and we'd have all these adventures together. From Easter Island we left and headed west again and we head towards French Polynesia where you'd have to bring the chief some kava root and go through a kava ceremony but that's really kind of gross because drinking kava is like drinking dirty sock water and it kind of made my tongue numb but we really enjoyed French Polynesia we wake up every morning and we go wakeboarding and then we'd work all day and then play all night Always on passage too, I love putting the fishing lines overboard and just trying to catch a fish. It was also the time on board to catch up on things and take things apart and do maintenance. After French Polynesia, we headed south straight towards New Zealand. And trust me, New Zealand is amazing. Talk about a land of adventure. And Blaine and I tried every adventure sport out there. After spending America's Cup 2000 in New Zealand, the owner phoned us up and says, Hey, think I want to do Alaska for the summer. Well, we were like, okay, and we headed straight north. En route to Alaska, we stopped on Palmyra, which is about a thousand miles south of Hawaii. What an amazing place. While there, NASA actually hired us, and astronaut Chuck Brady needed to be delivered to Kingman Reef. So we took him there, and he spent all night on this reef, which is basically just a pile of rocks, talking to the space station. The cool thing about Palmyra is, besides all the wildlife, is the history of it. It's an island that was used in World War II, and we really got to explore and check out the wildlife and check out all the birds and just enjoy ourselves.
From Palmyra, it was a stop in Hawaii and then straight to Kodiak, Alaska. Alaska is probably one of my favorite places to cruise. Even though it's so cold, it is absolutely stunning and I'm so excited that Blaine and I have now decided to purchase our own boat and take our family north. Well, in Alaska, Blaine and I actually decided to hop boats. Actually, I got kicked off of Galileo due to immigration. But anyways, we joined Lady Diane. And she was a 100-foot powerboat, which was a bit different for us going from a sailboat to a powerboat. And the thing with Lady Diane is she actually didn't have enough gas to get across the ocean. So Blaine and I loaded her on top of Dockwise, and we took her to the Mediterranean, right through the Panama Canal. Having your boat on dockwise was actually pretty cool because it was kind of like having your boat in a yard. So Blaine and I actually got lots of work done on Lady Diane. We ground out all the props, we put replaced the zincs, we did the bottom paint, and I did lots of varnish and anything that Lady Diane needed done to her to get her ready for Italy. So we got off of dockwise in France and sailed the boat to Italy where we spent about four months going up and down the coast all the way from Genoa south to Capri. And of course, when the guests weren't on board, we got to play. After Italy, Lady Diane got shipped back to North America and we spent the Christmas in Bahamas before heading south towards the Panama Canal. We took her through the Panama Canal, which would have been my third time going through the canal. And then we brought her up the west coast of the United States and it was about then that Blaine and I looked at each other and I don't know if it was my clock ticking or whatever, but we decided it was just time to get off of the boats. And so we hit San Diego and Blaine and I looked at each other and said, yep, now's the time. We packed up all of our stuff and headed to Lourdes, Louisiana. And we haven't been on boats since. 